Hi, this is Little Moth. She's one of the very first Little Moths that I did. She's inspired by music videos, gothic style, gothic fashion, although she's very kind of romantic gothic. So she's more on the lighter side, I would say. They all are really. I would like to take the moths series even further and do some more darker style moths in the future. But for now, I always end up going on the lighter side. So she is a little shy moth. I used pictures from the internet to create her face. I didn't have one particular face that I took all my reference from. I took it from a whole lot of different faces. As you can see in my reference, there's even a doll face in there. And the doll face was there to remind myself that I need to make large eyes. So most of the time I definitely use my reference from real life pictures but sometimes I'll put in a style or something that may be from art to give me an inspiration but it's never used for reference. I always use reference from real life. So I wanted her to have a nice little smiley face. The idea is that they are quite shy because I imagine moths hiding in dark corners. She's supposed to be a little bit shy and a little bit young as well. So all of my reference photographs were all from kind of children and young looking adults. I'm using my ball tool to create her mouth. Ball tools are very useful for pressing in and making little corners especially like around the mouth around the nose ar around the eyes and the tear ducts of the eyes and things like that they can be used to get into little small spaces at this point I'm filling out the cheeks I usually use my three-quarter view for that you can get a nice idea of how much of the cheek you can see from the three-quarter view you can see how far the the cheeks come out you can also see how far the brow bones come out so I'm just building the clay up around the face looking at different reference pictures and then looking at my face and then building up where I can see more flesh then I just add more clay and just piece by piece whatever I do on one side I and I make sure I do on the other side so that I don't end up with building a whole lot of clay on one side and not on the other side and then you've got to try and balance that out and it can be quite a nightmare I've also put the eyes in quite early and then I'm just building up the clay around the eyes to build the eyes and I'm focusing all the time especially on this one to make sure that I keep her eyes large I'm using my dentist tools I use them all the time and my little pointy tool that I've got from the nail art sets my favorite tools are my dentist tools and my pointy tools and my ball tools the ball tools are just so useful for getting into the little areas around the mouth and around the nose anywhere where you need to get into the small areas and also using it as a sort of pencil to sort of almost draw in the shapes I also use my dentist tools for drawing I use them to sort of cross hatch it's just a style I developed I don't really have any reason for it it's just it's comfortable to me it makes it easy for me to sculpt it's just like a handwriting I guess and I use it all the time and I use the edge of my dentist tools to sort of draw almost with and flatten the clay as well so I just taking small pieces building them and blending them into the, the mass the main mass of the face and then I'll just get two, a small piece again I usually take one piece divide it into half so you have two pieces the same size and then add them to both sides of the face so it's sort of symmetrical the whole time I'm working I use my glasses even more on top of that I use a magnifying headset so that I can really see what I'm doing. The reason I started doing that is one, my eyes are not what they used to be, but secondly, the camera that you use when you take photographs of your work, when you're going to sell it, is like a magnifier. And so it will show up every bit of, if there's an area that's not smooth or something's not perfectly done, it will show up in the camera. So you kind of have to sculpt and paint as if you are looking through the camera. Often turn the head upside down so that you can see the symmetry better. Sometimes you, you kind of need that to be able to see everything that might need to be adjusted. That's where building the head on a stick is very useful because you can turn the head ups and down so easily and whichever way you need to when you're painting and sculpting. I'm using the pointy tool to make sure that the eyes stay really big so taking all the clay away from the eyes so that I can build only a small bit of clay around the eyes and keep the eyes really big. I'm adding more clay to the sides to the brow bones so I'm using my three-quarter view to be able to see how much clay I need to add to the brow bones. Again it's using my pointy tool to make sure that I don't build up too much clay and I keep those eyeballs out so that when I come to add the eyelids it's only a tiny bit of clay. Then I need to build up the forehead make sure that I've got enough 
clay on the top of the head otherwise what will happen is I'll start to think there's something wrong but maybe you won't know what's wrong so you kind of have to make sure that you've got the full volume of the head so that it looks correct in its proportions and I've added some nice big pieces of clay on the sides for the cheeks because she's smiling so her cheeks will bunch up a bit so when you look through your three-quarter view you can then see that you need to sort of bunch up the cheeks a bit because when you do a smile it's not just the mouth that smiles it's the whole face the eyes look a little bit different the cheeks look a little bit different and you have to look at your reference to be able to see where the features on the face change when you smile now I'm adding the tiny tiny bits of clay to the eyelids wanting to keep those eyes really big and not to sinking into the face and getting lost in the clay my pointy tool is actually one of my favorite tools and they're so cheap they come in every nail brush set I've got so many of them because I'm always buying nail brushes. Now I'm working on the ears. For the ears, draw the out the shape of the ear first, where the folds of skin are. I take a piece out of the middle of the ear just so that you can have that deep part in the middle of the ear. And I just use my ball tools and my pointy tool to shape the ears. Now I'm smoothing everything, which I'm using some mineral spirit on my brushes. And I'm just slowly but surely smoothing out all of those lines that I made when I was sculpting. I use my brushes as tools really so when I'm smoothing I also press in when I want to create more of a shadow area. I ended up with a nice smile that I uh, really liked with a little dimple on the side so it's just a little smile. So once everything's nice and smooth it's time for the head to go into the oven and bake for about 40 minutes so it's nice and solid. While that was baking, I went on to working on the hands. So I always work with the hands on an armature, makes it nice and strong to be able to add the raw clay to. I add little bits of clay, one by one here I'm adding some clay for the knuckles on the hand. So I've got most of the hand sculpted out and then I add extra clay on top to add sort of mass where the knuckles would be. And I'm using my dentist tools or soap sculpting tools, I think they might be called, for smoothing out and basically drawing like a pencil. I'm adding a pad to the back of the hand. I sculpt most of the basic hand and then I add pieces on afterwards like the pads on the back of the hand, around the thumb, the knuckles on the front. I use a little pen tool to be able to draw in the nails. This is a tool I've made myself. I use a little brush to soften those lines that I make with the pen tool. I also lift the tips of the fingers up because that makes it look more elegant. And I used a very thin pin tool. So this one is actually a bead needle that's embedded in some old clay. Because it's bouncy, it's softer, it gives a softer line. And I use that to draw the lines on the knuckles and the lines in the back of the hand and on the, in the palm of the hand. And of course, they need to match. So onto the feet and I'm building the feet off the body. So I put a mass of clay in the kind of basic size of the foot and I'm using my dentist tools again. And I'm using it, as I always do, a little bit of a smooth the flat surface to smooth and the side of the tool to sort of draw to try and map out all of the shapes on the foot. So we're moving on to the body. I've got her on my sculpting stand. I always use my sculpting stand. Very useful. Holds the figure in pose so that you can sort of work on it. It's almost like having someone hold your figure without squishing it while you can carry on sculpting. Arms hate doing them because they have bones that twist and it can be very confusing depending on what pose your arms are in. But I can lift these arms as you can see in this video. Because I've got them on the the armature that makes so that you can take the arms away so you can have a detachable arms on the armature so that is why the arms can be lifted so easily and it can be very useful I don't use it all the time but it can be very useful now I'm using my ball tool to do some more drawing which is basically what I'm doing here I really use the ball the tools the, the pointy tools the ball tools and even my dentist tools to draw on the clay almost, to draw in where the shadows are. Finally, I am doing some smoothing and I'm actually using my other thick needle tool to carve in where I'm going to put her clothes. So when clothes are on you, they kind of can push on your body. They, the skin sort of pushes in sometimes if your clothes are tight. And so you want that look when you're coming to putting the clothes on so that it looks more realistic. So that's why I've sort of mapped out where all the pieces of cloth will be going later on with my thick needle tool. So I'm just continuing to work on the stomach using my dentist tool, using my needle tools to carve in the belly button. And after she's baked, she is now ready for clothes and I'm adding some green fabric for her clothes. I put moth decoration around her waist 
So I wanted her to be very much based on the lunar moth. And all of her clothes were also in the same green color, so sort of representing the lunar moth. So I'm adding little pieces of clay, and I'm really just, instead of adding a huge piece of clay for the fabric of her clothes, I'm actually just adding little pieces of clay and building up the clothes as I go. I just find that much easier than adding one piece of clay, um, which can just get a bit overwhelming. And as always, I'm using my dentist tools. As you can see, I'm pushing the clay into those grooves I made before, and then taking off the excess. So that it really looks like she's got some tight fabric sort of wrapping around her arms. So when I'm sculpting the fabric I really am just sculpting it the same way as I sculpt her body by adding little pieces, blending them in to the main area. I've made two holes on her back for wings that I'm going to later add after her clothes have been baked. I always add the clay for the fabric after I've baked the actual figure because you don't want to squish anything that you've made before so you don't want the clay of her body to be raw still you want that to be baked and finally for her outfit i added clay wings for her so i did use holes and i did use some wire on the clay wings but you can't see it it's all embedded in the clay i was going to use the holes to make bigger wings but in the end i decided clay wings would be nice because i can make them very soft very drapey i wanted them to be close to her body so they didn't really take away from any other parts of her they're sort of just very demure like her very shy and sort of attached to her body almost like a piece of clothing in themselves and as I always do I just built them up using pieces of clay building up creases in them so that they're like sort of waves and uh, lumps and bumps in the fabric once the fabric and the wings were baked she came out of the oven again once she was cool I started to paint her I used a shadow tone of her skin tone and I just painted that into all of the shadow areas on her body. I always use Genesis paint which is a heat set paint so you do one layer and then you can dry it with an embossing gun before you go on to the next layer of paint. When they're so small the shadows are very small so you want to sort of accentuate them so that it brings out all of the little details in her body. Details like the stomach muscles also making the belly button look deeper and of course the shadows around the moth so that the moth detail of her clothing can sort of pop. So then it went on to painting the actual moth. Even though she was green in the beginning I wanted to add more color to the moth and make it look even more like a lunar moth and of course have the orange popping as well. I also painted some some lines of her fabric so some of the very wispy green lines are done in paint because you can never get the clay to be that thin and I wanted some of the lines to be sort of really wispy and almost spidery. I chose red viscose for her hair. I think it's a very nice color that pops against the greens. I build the hairstyle by adding pieces of viscose hair one at a time using tacky glue. They're all curled by using a knitting needle so I've heated up a knitting needle and wound the viscose fiber around the knitting needle to make nice curls in her hair and then added each piece of the hair one by one. Then I wanted to add a little bit more detail to her hairstyle so I plaited some pieces of Visco's hair and glued them to the top so she's got a bit of a messy bun on the top of her head. My pin tools come in very useful when it comes to adding hair to the head as well so I kind of use them for hairstyles as well as sculpting. And there she is, hairstyle finished, a little bit on the messy side because at the end of the day she is a moth. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting me. I really appreciate every one of you. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, I'd be so happy to welcome you into my studio. I'm currently uploading one hour of sculpting tutorials each month. At the moment, we're making the Salty Mermaid in a cup. If you join, you'll also gain access to over 250 videos I've already posted, which include hours of real-time tutorial footage. For example, I document the entire process of sculpting a man, a smiling face, and a child. You can also sign up for my mailing list for free by clicking on the link in the video description. Everyone who signs up gets a free in-depth sculpting a nose tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thank you. See you again soon.